In my last video, I set up a couple of virtual machines on my Raspberry Pi, and they worked out great. We could run web servers on them, and we could access those web servers on those virtual machines from the Pi itself. However, if we wanted to access those web servers from anywhere else on the network, we couldn't do it. And it was all because they were sat on a private network that the virtual machine manager or the hypervisor was managing. Now, there's an easy technique that you can use to get your virtual machines actually onto your home network. And so you can set up access to them like you would with any physically connected hardware. Let me show you how. Hello once again, Pi Geeks and Techno Nerds all around the world. My name's Jeff, and I'm an IT professional who's been in the industry for over 30 years. I've been using Raspberry Pi since I first came out, and I wanted to share with you some of the projects that I've done over the years. If you like what you see on this channel, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you want to see more, and also hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. Let me know in the comments how you get on with this video, and if you've got any ideas for other things you'd like to see me do, put those in there as well. So why is it that networking with virtual machines is so difficult? What is it about the virtual machine's connectivity that means you can't access it from outside the PC that you're running on? Well, let's come and take a look. Here, I've got our two virtual machines that we set up in the last video. Now, my Ubuntu virtual machine has got a different IP address to what it had in the last video, but conceptually, everything's the same. On my Alpine Linux virtual machine, I've got an IP address of 192.168.122.55. On my Ubuntu virtual machine, I've got an IP address of 192.168.122.200. But where did these addresses come from? Well, if we go back to our virtual machine manager and we hit the edit menu, and then we go to connection details, we then get this window here. When you go to virtual networks in this window, what you can see is that there is a virtual network that's been set up it's called VRBR0, and the network address has been set up as 192.168.122.0. The hypervisor here is then also acting as a DHCP server for that network, where it can then serve out addresses between .2 and .254. If I go into the properties for one of our virtual machines, and specifically the network section here, you can see in this network source dropdown, it's been set to virtual network default and NAT. And you can then see the IP address that it's been allocated. So what's happening is the virtual machine is being connected to this virtual network that the hypervisor's generated. And then the hypervisor's taking care of all of the network translation that has to happen between the two. So it knows how to get to the 122 network but basically nothing else on my network does. I can get to the Raspberry Pi itself, which is on the 192.168.0 network, which is my home network, but nothing on my home network knows anything about this 122 network. And that's why I can't access the web server on either of my virtual machines. So this is what I've got illustrated here. What you can see is our Raspberry Pi and it's got its virtual manager, which is then managing this 192.168.122 network, whilst the Raspberry Pi has got this 192.168.0 address. And that address has come because I've got the physical Ethernet port of the Raspberry Pi plugged into my home network. And so the router on my home network is then serving out that IP address so I can get this .39 address. Now, when the virtual machines were created, those were attached onto this virtual network that the hypervisor was managing. So they then get IP addresses on the .122 network. Now, this virtual switch that they're connected to is known as a bridge. And you can see here the identifier for this particular bridge is VRBR0. But there's a trick that we can do here. What we can do is create our own network bridge and we can attach the physical Ethernet device of our Raspberry Pi into it. Now, what we'd then end up with is effectively a virtual network switch that is an extension of our home network. And what happens after this 
is that the virtual machines will then get IP addresses on our home network, as if they were physical machines directly connected into it. And it's actually really easy to do this. Now here, I've come back onto my Raspberry Pi, and I'll take you through how to create a network bridge and then add your physical Ethernet port to it. Now, one word of caution here, when you're setting up a network bridge, you can't add a wireless device to it. It will let you add the device into the bridge, but it won't work properly. The underlying reasons for this are really quite complicated and are buried into how wireless networking works and how its addressing systems work, especially on the physical layer. Now, that's really too much detail to go into here. But just for the purpose of this, just make sure you only add a physical Ethernet device into your bridge. Don't try to use the Wi-Fi device. Back on the Pi here, I've shut both of my virtual machines down. Now, the other thing to bear in mind just before we start this process, you need to do this actually logged into the console of your Raspberry Pi. Don't try to do this over SSH. What you're going to be doing is completely changing the way that the networking system works on the Pi. And at the point where that restarts, if you are connected in remotely, all that's going to happen is that you'll lose your connection and you may not be able to get back onto it again. So you're much better off actually running on the Pi directly. Now, the two commands we need to run here are really long. Normally, I just provide a little pop up that shows the commands that I'm typing in. But in this case, they're so big, I'll actually put them in the description. But I'll describe them as I go along. In the first part of the command here, I'm just calling into the command line interface for Network Manager. That is NMCLI. I'm then saying I want to create a new connection of type bridge. So I'll be creating one of these virtual network switches. The next part of the command is to give that bridge a name. Network Manager likes to work with real kind of names for interfaces. So I'm going to give this one the name bridge zero. And the last part of the command is to tell it what the interface name is going to be. Now, if you're not sure about what interface names are, let me just go and give you an illustration. If I open a new tab here and I just run IP link show, you can see all of the network interfaces that are here on my Raspberry Pi. This part that I've highlighted is the interface name for the physical Ethernet connection, ETH0. Equally, there's the interface name WLAN0 for my wireless network connection. And then VRBR0 is the name that the hypervisor gave to the virtual network switch that it created. Now, through this process, I could add our physical Ethernet device into that pre-existing bridge. However, since the hypervisor is set as a DHCP server on that, I'd have to unpick all of those settings. So it's actually just far easier for us to create our own virtual switch. So now we've got our command, let's just run it. And it says that we've created our new bridge. And if I go back to the other tab and I run IP link show again, you can see that our new interface, BR0, is there. Now we have to do the complicated bit of adding the physical Ethernet device into that bridge. The first part of the second command we have to run here is very similar to the first in that we're creating a new connection. And this connection is going to be of type Ethernet. I then put in slave hyphen type bridge. What this means is that we're going to make this physical Ethernet device an interface within the bridge. We're not going to be creating it as a wholly separate interface. It's going to become part of the bridge itself. Just like with the first command, we then have to give our new connection a name and we're just going to call it bridge zero hyphen port zero. I then have to tell it what physical interface I'm going to be adding into the bridge. In this case, I'm going to be adding in eth zero. And finally, I need to tell it what bridge I'm going to connect to. In this case, I'm going to be connecting to BR0. And if I run this, you can see that it's run successfully. So my ETH0 physical interface should now be part of the bridge. Now we've got our bridge created. All we have to do is reboot. Now the box is rebooted. Something really interesting has happened. On our bridge interface here, now it has been given the IP address that was previously given to ETH0. If we look at the ETH0 device, it hasn't been given an IP address at all. It's because it's been entirely consumed by the bridge. 
And in effect, it's acting as if it's a physical interface on the switch itself. Now, if I start up the Virtual Machine Manager and I select one of our virtual machines, within the network settings, we now need to make another change. In the network source, we can now use this drop down to select Bridge Device. And we want to give this the name BR0. And what this will do is it will instruct this network interface to connect onto our bridge. If I hit apply on that, and now I start up the virtual machine, if I run the command to show the IP addresses on the virtual machine, what you can see is that it's now been given a 192.168.0 address, not a 192.168.122 address. So in effect, this is exactly the same now as if I had a physical box connected onto my home network and I just installed Alpine Linux on that. And so it's just exactly what's shown on this diagram. We've started up our Alpine Linux virtual machine, which is now connected to our own bridge. This switch is then connected through our physical interface onto the home network. And the router has actually given our new Alpine Linux virtual machine an IP address. Now here, I've opened up Firefox on my main PC. And if I just navigate the HTTP colon, 192.168.0.214, which is the IP address that the Alpine Linux box was given, you can see I can now connect to its web page. And we can do exactly the same with the Ubuntu virtual machine. If I go into its network settings in exactly the same way, I use the drop down to say that I want to connect to bridge device BR0, and I hit apply, and then start up the virtual machine. Then we can see that in exactly the same way, the Ubuntu virtual machine has been given the IP address 192.168.0.232. And if I navigate to that in my browser, I get to the Ubuntu Apache 2 default web page. So what I could do here is set up all of my websites and I could have those available on my local network. I could then change the port forwarding information within my router so that I could direct particular web access to my virtual machines and serve up my web content from the VMs running on my Pi. Or I could set up a reverse proxy as I did in an older video to allow specific URLs to be used to then redirect to the Raspberry Pi virtual machines web content. So there you go. Now you can set up your own virtual machines on a Raspberry Pi or indeed on any other machine on your home network. You can install servers and applications on your virtual machines where they're then running in a nicely sandboxed safe environment. And you can expose those to your home network and indeed to the outside world. The sky is really the limit with this. But that's it for this video. Once again, if you liked what you see here, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you want to see more and hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. Let me know in the comments how you get on creating virtual machines on your Raspberry Pis and let me know what you use them for. And just like always, if you've got any other ideas for projects that you'd like to see me do on this channel, let me know in the comments as well. Thanks so much for watching till the end and until next time, bye for now. Thank you.